Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, you know, it's paying off. The guys are buying in, and uh, anytime you work this hard uh, for this long, especially for these guys that have been here, gone through a lot of faces. Uh, just for the seniors, it was uh, you know I'm proud of the senior leadership, and I'm proud that they had a big game like that that's paying off for them. Yeah, I don't. We, we didn't have any sacks uh, Saturday or Thursday night. So, uh, we're, we, in general, the, the guys are playing hard for us. I think they're buying in, and you can hear some of the comments from them as, as us as a coaching staff. And I know it's uh, bleeding into the older guys down through the younger guys into the locker room. We're excited about that part, and you know now it's just uh, that one I told the guys is a 24. Uh, our celebration, we got to put that behind us. That's way behind us now. We got to go on to the next one. Uh, just uh, assignment sound across the board up front with our gaps. And uh, we, we took away the perimeter game, which we thought we had to do that hurt, that they had hurt LSU and uh, other teams in the past by uh, getting their outside run game going. We kind of boxed him in a little bit. And really, our guys. Whether he had it or the running backs had it, we, we had multiple hats on uh, on their ball carriers, and I think that paid off down the stretch for us. Mark, do you think that the fact that the game was on national TV and history has kept not really being that strong defensively, do you think that really sent a message far and wide? Yeah, I hope so. You know, I mean, that's what we uh, preach to these guys since we've been here. Uh, we told them from day one. You know, I, I've been around Cliff. I've coached against him. I know our offense is going to score a bunch of points, a lot of yards, and our message to our guys is just blind faith. You know, buy into what we're trying to get done here. This is way back in early spring, and it'll all pay off. And uh, you know, it, you need to have success for them to really uh, take hold of what we're doing. And I thought that going into the SMU game, that was going to be a critical uh, factor for us to have success, to come away with the sacks that we did in that game and, and to play well for the majority of that game uh, really helped us take steps in the right direction. And obviously, Thursday night game was, was huge for us. And we're going to keep building on it. Just, you know, uh, toughness, blue collar mentality here. Um, overachievers, a lot of people saying that we can't do this, we can't do that. You haven't done this, you haven't done that, and really, our we don't care what what the what the history has been here defensively. We want to set the tone for not only for this year but uh, for for the future of this program. Is there much room for improvement against Texas State after? Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. It's never as, as a coach. It's never as good as it seems. And it's never as bad as it seems. So coming out of what looked pretty awesome on Thursday night, there was a lot of things that we needed to get cleaned up and uh, taking steps to get that done. And now going into uh, the Texas State game and what they present offensively is going to be a lot of the same menu that we saw from TCU. You got a coordinator there that was off the TCU uh, tree of coaches. And uh, it's going to be Discipline football option, read zone option, uh, the fly sweeps, the orbits, you name it, they're going to present it to us. So we've got to play with good eye control like we did uh, against TCU for the majority of the night to have success this week. Say that again? Just, you know, I think. Uh, down the stretch, tackling and pursuit angles. Uh, there were a couple coverages that we busted, and he couldn't find a couple of receivers that were open. Um, he missed missed num the number three receiver in the third quarter that was open. So when when we did make a mistake, uh, I think he was a little bit antsy. He didn't throw the perfect ball, um, maybe seeing too much, and it didn't get us exposed. But obviously, it's on tape, and we have to get it corrected. Uh, just maybe our confidence in him and uh, know he's been through a lot of coordinators and may have been uh, 
treated different ways here in the past. And uh, I know Mike Smith has done a great job uh, with not just Terrence Bullitt, but with his entire outside linebacking crew. And uh, I think the kid uh, just believes in what we're doing and his leadership and really coming from where what we inherited with him. And then all of a sudden, you know, the, the, the group votes him as one of the defensive team captains. That, I think that was a shot in the arm for him. And uh, I think he's building off of that. Yeah, we don't we don't ever talk about that. We it is what it is, and uh, we talk talk to our guys all the time. We don't care where the ball is, or how it got there. We're gonna defend. We're gonna defend the field and play with an attitude. And uh, we've got plenty enough in our room uh, to keep guys fresh. Probably did not do a great job uh, myself and and our staff of keeping uh, our guys fresh. And I know our corners played every snap. Could have probably sprinkled in. Uh, our backup corners uh, throughout the course of that game. And I know Will Smith at inside linebacker missed a lot of tackles late where he wasn't missing early. Uh, could have played Blake Dees more. Um, Awe could have probably played more. I think we did a good job of keeping the front fresh. I'm not sure we were able to uh, keep the second level and third levels for as fresh as we need to. I, I didn't. I, I don't. I don't get a chance to see a lot of it. Uh, I know our guys are. Sometimes it's frustrating as a coach to trying to make adjustments, and they're now looking at the the big jumbotron on what's going on on the field. But uh, did miss most of most of the game. Coach, when you say eye control, do you mean reading the play and reacting to it? What, what Just every position has certain reads, uh, certain keys. That if uh, you have your eyes on those keys, that'll that'll put you in position to have success. If your eyes are wandering and you're not reading those keys of what you're supposed to be looking at, that's when we get exposed. Yeah, uh, yeah, Terrence. We had uh, we had eight guys that had double-digit production, uh, which is you know anytime you get. 10 or more, you get in the teens. I think uh, Terrence Bullitt had 32 production points. Uh, we thought Will Smith had a huge night against SMU with 22. Uh, Terrence had 32. So, and I, uh, I know um, Bruce Jones had a, had a really solid night for us. Uh, Trey Porter, again, uh, in, the, in the running for a player of the game. Terrence Bullitt was our player, defensive player of the game, but uh, could have named a bunch of them across the board. Pete Robertson played well. Kerry Hyder played well. Uh, Dartwan Bush had constant pressure on the quarterback. Uh, we just have to continue to work on angles when we come clean or we beat blocks uh, in the backfield. We've had a lot of missed sack opportunities, again, like we did at SMU. Uh, we we're, we're look we look at uh, tackles, unassisted tackles, assisted tackles, uh, pass breakups, quarterback hits, quarterback hurries, uh, interceptions. You know, uh, scoring on defense, fumble, cause fumbles, fumble recoveries. Uh, we've got a lot of a lot of different categories, and they're all weighted differently. So you're going to get more for an uh, uh, unassisted tackle than you would an assisted tackle. That'd be in one example. But then they also get minus points for missed assignments, missed opportunities, missed tackles, or loafs. So as you ta tally everything up, that kind of, if you look across the board and you got somebody that is in a, a double digit game, that's a, that's a pretty solid performance. And Terrence was at 32. Well, we had, we, yeah, we did have minus. <laughs> so, you, know, you, guys, you guys would be excited, Coach, that um, you had every, almost every defensive player, well, one, uh, making a tackle, make tackle on more. Yeah. Uh, and the first one that didn't got a tackle, tackle interception. But just talk about, talk about you know, your product, how you product the team up around more. Yeah, we, we, we're, our deal is we're going to play 11 as one. You know, we keep preaching that. Uh, unselfish play, do your job. Trust the 10 guys that are on the field with you. Uh, 
and that's really what we've been preaching since we've been here. Uh, every, everything that we do, uh, and we're multiple, but there's there's rhyme. You know, there's a there's a, there's a reason for the madness, and everybody's got to do their job. And we, and we're stressing all the time that we've got plenty of guys in in our room, our defensive room, that we could go uh, a good two, sometimes three deep at position for those guys to to get in and make plays for us, and trusting them to do that. I I did. I mean, I never really saw them flinch. You know, I, I think they were. We were upset with the score there in the in the fourth quarter. We were a little bit on our heels, and uh, I, I was trying to maybe call a perfect game down the stretch. I was looking at the formation before I got calls in. Was a little bit late on some calls. I think that made our guys a little unantsy, as it should be. Uh, trying to get uh, see if they were going to be an empty or not uh, off the initial formation, but. The play they scored on the run, we missed two two tackles on it. We should have had him down for a fourth and two, which would have been been a big decision for them. Do they kick the field goal? Do they go for it on fourth down? And they hadn't uh, converted on a fourth down, so I think uh, you know that would have been interesting. But our our front was lined up wrong. We were unsound with the front, and it was almost a gimme. Be honest with you. That was uh, per, we, that was exactly what we thought they were going to do, and that's what, why we put him there. No, I, I'm just kind of being facetious. He 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 did. If we had a twist game going on in the middle, we actually were in a three-man front. They went to a, a an empty formation, so we went to a check, but we kept the twist game on. He was uh, second in the twist game and kind of felt the offensive line separate for him. He felt the screen and just kind of floated, floated out of it, and the uh, quarterback never saw him. Great, great, uh, great play by, by him. And he's been, he is what we are going to be bringing to uh, West Texas in this defense. Blue collar mentality, hard worker. He's playing nose guard at 265 pounds. So, you know, he's not the prototypical nose guard, but we've moved, we've played him at nose. We've played him at uh, defensive end. We've played him at tackle. He knows the whole package. Plus, he's going to roll his sleeves up and battle you for 60 minutes. I hope. I hope it's. A, I hope we score a lot of points. And uh, you know, I, I just I just hope that. Um, you know, our defense played so well Saturday night, and they bailed us out a lot. So I, I just hope we can um, hold up to our end this week. Tony, can you talk about the situation the other night? Did uh, Davis Webb come in in that moment and, and perform in the way he did? Yeah, really proud of Davis. Um, you know, he, he, both of those guys could, could be playing right now. Um, they're both good enough, and, and Davis showed why. Um, you know, that's one of the things that as coaches we've always got to prepare, have those guys ready to go. And, and Davis does a lot of it on his own. And so really pleased with how well he played um, coming in. You know, he had about two or three warm-up throws, and then he was right in the mix. So um, did a really good job and was really proud of him with how he performed. Coach, you being a former quarterback, can you talk about the difference between Baker's ball and Davis' ball? Uh, they, they both throw pretty tight spirals and have strong arms. So I, I don't really see a, a ton of difference in either one of them, really. <laughs> no, I don't think so. That that uh, that's got that's been toned down significantly. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good question. Yeah, I think that you know he's played well. Um, you know he got banged up in the TCU game and and uh, you know was was uh, you're going against a really good defense for the first time. Those guys are well coached and you know I know they were picked to win the conference, so um, they, they had a lot of good guys up front on defense and and uh, you know I'm excited to see Baker come out and, and really you know they're, they're, you're fortunate because it's a learning experience, but we won the game. You know he was able to learn a lot probably from the film and from being out there, and we still won the game. Well, I think that you know he, he reacted fine, and I think that the true test of how he react will be this week in practice and this week in the game. And, and he's competitive, he's anxious, he's been up here several times watching Texas State and, and looking forward to going out there Saturday and, and getting out there and, and playing well. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's just a lot of work for him, um, just a lot of rehab, and, and he's been doing a great job of, of staying mentally tuned in and doing what he can physically um, until he's able to start throwing and do those types of things. So um, he, he's been a, a great team guy, um, you know, really goes going above and beyond as far as being a team guy and doing what he's doing under the circumstances. So um, just doing his part mentally to stay tuned. I think that the excitement, it, it's its good that we've had these last three games because it's able to, at home to capitalize, I think, on the excitement that our fans have for our program. And I think that our kids are feeding off of that. So I do think it's important that we get off to the, a good start at home. And, and, and one of the things that we talked about a lot last week was protecting the Jones and, and, and getting back to where this place is a place where people don't want to come in and play because of how loud um, and how rowdy our crowd is and then also how well we play, obviously. You know, I think there are guys that are scrapping it and, and, and they're getting after it. They're playing really hard. Um, I mean, LaRaven Clark, you know, he got after it Saturday night, um, played really hard. And that's what you see is guys are making some mistakes, but they're making them full speed. Um, you know, they're, they're being coachable. They're playing well together and they're playing really hard. And so you have a chance to win every week as long as they do that. Yeah, he, he's a lot of fun, and, and, and really yeah, there's a lot of teaching points for our guys in terms of never stop blocking on a play downfield because he's so hard to tackle, he's so elusive, and, and making that one-handed catch, you know, that, that, was, uh, yeah, that was impressive, and, and uh, really excited to see the success he's had. Um, he, he's worked really hard, and he's a fun guy to coach, fun to be around, and, and uh, glad that he's having the success he's having. Well, it takes a lot of pressure off, um, especially you know as an offense and, and uh, getting in a rhythm on a night that we had last Saturday night offensively going against a good defense. Our defense matched the challenge and, and exceeded it. And, and I think if you watch the game, and especially being down on the sidelines, those guys on defense for, for us were, were playing very physical. They were hitting people. They were flying around in the football. And so it's really encouraging to see. And I think they have great leadership from their senior class, some guys that have been through a lot of coordinators, and some guys that have uh, some toughness about them. Um, and then Coach Wally and his staff, as far as motivating, putting guys in place to, to be successful, they've done a really good job. Aside from that TCU game, have you seen signs that this defense could be one of the, the better ones over the past decade? Yeah, I, I think they have a chance to. Our scheme's really good, and, and our guys have bought in. And, and I think that um, one of the things about being with a, um, you know, a bunch of different coordinators over the last few years is they're able to pick up things quickly. And they've done that. And so they're able to maybe show a little bit more than, than um, in years past. And, and I think the main thing is the guys are playing hard. And, and this team is as good as the team wants to be from within. And those guys on our defense, those seniors, provide great leadership and great toughness. Oh, I, I am uh, really happy with those guys. I mean, they're, it's an ultimate shot, sign of being selfless. Um, something we talked about is, 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 is you know, cause greater than ourselves. And, and, and Eric Ward, you know, he didn't catch a pass Saturday night, but you couldn't tell by his effort. If you watch the film for four full quarters, um, was getting after it. And, and Bradley Marquez the same. And they do it in practice. And it's no coincidence that they do it um, on Saturday nights because the toughness that they bring in practice, they, they show it on Saturday nights. Yeah, I thought that last week's uniforms were awesome. I thought that our kids loved them. I know recruits were fired up about them. And, uh, and then a whiteout this week, so it gives us another theme and another, uh, um, you know, another reason to be excited, I think, for our kids and for our fans. And, and uh, as, as long as they're wearing white and being really loud, um, we're, we're glad to have as many fans show up and, and support our guys. I have no idea, Betsy. That's another one of those things that I just I show up on Saturday and when I see what they're wearing, no, uh, it's, it's above. That's exactly right. Yeah, I just worry about mowing my own lawn. <laughs> <laughs> what is it about uniforms that recruits are like so much? I think, from a uniform standpoint, you've got to have something, whether it's helmets or uniforms, that, that just catches their eye, and and it, it's it's hip, 
you know, you, you, they're able to uh, identify with it. And so I think with the, the uniform combination we wore on, on Saturday and um, just had great reviews from the kids that we're recruiting and, and kids that are on our team. And so, you know, it's what, you know, it's kind of the signs of the times is what kids like. And, and so we want to try to stay um, above the curve and, and give them some, some neat things to, to come here and wear and, and it'll separate ourselves um, for as, as a program. Yeah, it helps going against our defense because our defense presents so many problems because they give you so many different looks. So all through spring, all through fall camp, um, our old line, there's not a look that they're not going to see out on Saturday. And so um, going against them in years past helps because you're familiar with their personnel, you're familiar with their scheme, which is a little bit different, I think, up front than it has been in years past. But um, ultimately, um, you know, have a good week of preparation and go out and execute. Well, we get to recruit. We get to go up, fly around, and, and see kids play in high school games, and, and uh, which is awesome. I love watching games on Friday night, and I think all these guys and the staff do. So on these off days, it's good for us because um, we are able to, to get ahead as far as opponent breakdown, but um, get out on the road, see our guys that are committed, and, and see other guys across the state play. You know, I, I just remember how hard they played. You know, how, I know when we played down in Texas A&M in 04, it was an overtime game. Um, you know, they do a great job on offense. And, and guys just play really hard. So, um, you know, that's what we have to match. And that's what we have to prepare for this week.